So welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to crochet a zipper into your crochet projects. Now before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you never miss out on another of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. Now I understand that there's a lot of concern around sewing zips into our projects and we've seen examples probably in Facebook groups or where people have made mistakes or they've shared their concerns. Some of these concerns are valid, but I'm going to go through lots of hints and tips with you today so that you can confidently sew in your zip, knowing that it's going to look absolutely beautiful and flawless. We're going to be avoiding any bunching up of our pattern. We're going to make sure that the finished project lies flat, even with the zip inside. And I'm going to share with you a whole host of tools that will make sewing your zip in much easier. So one of the first tools that we're going to talk about is, of course, the zip itself. Now, there are two different types of zips that are most commonly available. These are both plastic zips, but you can also get heavy duty metal zips. So we have a standard zip like this one where the zipper tab is on the same side as the zipper teeth. This bit here is called a zipper stop. You have one at the top and one at the bottom and then either side of the teeth you have the zipper tape. The zipper tape is a really useful tool. You can see exactly where you're supposed to sew along the, um, the zipper to get it secured into your project. Now the alternative to a traditional zip is something called an invisible zip. Now as you can see the tab is at the front here and the teeth are visible on the other side. There's no right or wrong decision when it comes to selecting the zip. If all you have is an invisible zip, go for it. You tend to see these kind of zips on pouches and bags where it's not essential that the zipper isn't featured or if you are looking to add a feature zip to your project, then you'd probably use a traditional or a standard zip. The invisible zips are generally used on garments and other projects like cushions where you don't want the zip to be that prominent and the way that it is used the teeth are on the inside or the wrong side as the case may be of your project so the teeth themselves aren't visible. You've got almost like this little chevron that indicates where would be a good place to sew down your zip. It's more visible on the wrong side because this is the side we would be looking at when we're sewing. So the first thing I always do is I just test my zip to make sure it works. Before I even start this process, you should always test your zips in the shop before you purchase them. Now, if you have a particular zip for a particular project, you can see that this one fits pretty much perfectly at the edge of this, these squares that I'm going to be using in the tutorial today. Now, you might think, but it's not, it's hanging over. Now these tabs really serve no function other than to give a really nice top edge to your zip. If you were sewing with fabric, you would tuck these inside your waistband, for instance. We are just going to chop them off when everything is sewn in. So the zipper length, if you were making a bag, you'd probably have your zip, excuse me, the bag one, for instance. This is way too long for a bag. You can, of course, arrange it so that the zip goes inside but obviously then you've got to make sure that they can reach the zipper tab. So for a bag perhaps that does have this width here you would go inside of the edge of the bag so that you can make a nice seam over the top and the end of the bag. For garments you're looking to do the same. It's quite normal for the zip to be extended below the edge of the zip but not by much. This is actually the end of the zip here so that would be the edge because we're going from edge to edge with this one. And then the zipper tab would be at the top of the corner. So that's how to assess the length of zipper that you need. And obviously zipper lengths can be adjusted. You may just need to adjust where the end is. You can either sew over where you want it to stop and that would shorten the length. And these zipper tabs, as I've said, unless you're sewing into fabric or you're lining a bag with a zip, there's not a lot to do with them really, other than just tack them down. Considering we're going to be sewing our zip into a project, knowing what colour to make your thread can be a bit confusing. Now, ideally, you would match your thread colour to that of your zip, because the zip or the sewing of the zip, if you're not lining your bag, would be visible on the inside of your project. The way that we're going to be sewing or attaching the zip to our project will mean that the stitches shouldn't be visible from the right side of our project where we're attaching this zip. 
So we don't need to match the colour to our project. And in fact, as long as we've matched it to our zipper colour, you can go as bold and bright as you want to, which is why it's really great to have a feature zip in a plain cardigan. Now alongside your thread, you are going to need a needle and it's entirely up to you what type of needle you like to use. Now this is a little bit too big, that eye. Um, and the reason that that's too big is because it's probably more of a darning needle. Hang on, let's try a different window. Now obviously, <laughs> needles are quite tiny and if you've got eyes like mine that are getting a little bit old, they can be a little bit of a challenge. You can get needle threaders, you can get self-threading needles as well. That's not going to show. Where literally you put the thread at the top and push the thread onto the needle and they work really well. Or you could insert it and it automatically threads. Um, ideally what you need is not too thick a needle and it should be a sewing needle, not a darning needle. As long as it goes through the fabric of your zipper tape quite easily, it will be fine to use. You can't even see where that's gone in. Now, one essential tool that will really help give you confidence is something called a seam ripper. So this one has a little safety nodule so you know which is the sharp end. And it's this edge here that is the sharp edge that would rip the seam for you if you make any mistakes. If you do need to undo all of your sewing, I will show you how to use this once we've sewn some of this in because it's quite an essential tool to correct any mistakes. But we need to make sure we don't put this sharp edge anywhere near our project because it can also cut yarn and wool and we don't want to create a problem where our project is coming undone. It's good to have a couple of stitch markers on hand to help secure our project in place before we start pinning in our zip and this is where your straight pins are going to come in really useful. If you have them, these are clover clips, I'm not sure what the official name is, they are really useful for keeping things in place and they have quite a wide opening. So if you're using a thick fabric, it's great to secure your zip in place with that. However, I find that these get in the way when I'm doing a zip because obviously you need to attach it to the edge and then that's in the way. So I'm probably going to be using just some straight pins today. These are the same pins I use for my blocking. So they are non-rust pins. So the final couple of recommendations I'm going to give you if you're going to take some time to sew in your zipper is the fact that you will need some time. As we know, when we're learning something new, it's important to give ourselves time to kind of get used to things, making sure that we've got some space to work in, most definitely work on a flat surface because that will prevent um, fabric becoming bunched up or not sewn correctly. So make sure you've got some space and you've got some time, gather those materials and let's pin in this zip ready for sewing. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a couple of squares that are left over from filming my hodgepodge blanket. So the first thing we would do is arrange the two sides that are going to be zipped up together. With your stitch markers, you're then going to secure the top of where the zipper is going to go. So you're just going to pop your stitch marker through to secure the two ends. I'm using a lockable stitch marker here, she says, coming undone. I'm going to use a different stitch marker because that is not locking. And you're just kind of securing those edges together so that they won't move too much. And we're going to do the same at the bottom. You can't quite see me do this, sorry. Just rest assured I have. So that the edges are together. So we've marked where the zip's going to end. So if you were doing, say, a skirt, you would mark where the end of the zipper would be. You can still secure the bottom of your project if you want to, just so that it can't shift about too much. But this is where the zipper is going to be inserted. At this point, I've got the project facing right side up. But to secure the zip in place, we're going to have, we're going to have the wrong side of our project facing us. You can see my edges here. Ignore them. Because this is the way we would place our zip. So you want the wrong side of your zip facing. So this is where it's going to look confusing because I have an invisible zip. Whereas if I was using a traditional zip, you would have this side. So you want the tab at the right side of your project. Um, so both of these, so it's on the other side. It's almost dangling down when you place it against your project. I'm going to rotate it so you can see the whole zip. And really your zip should fit into, 
if it was the teeth side down, the teeth would face into the middle of the space where the two edges join. And we would just simply arrange the zip so it ends where you want it to end. Ignoring these tapes because they could be folded down and sewn down later. So just ignore those tapes. Now I know that this zip is too long, so we're gonna just switch back to this one. If it was an invisible zip, the teeth will be facing you. So the zipper tab will be where your stitch marker is, indicating where the zip finishes. So we essentially just centering where the zip will go, which is kind of where those edges meet. This is where we're going to need our straight pins because we're gonna pin this in place, securing roughly where the zipper ends. So you can ignore these tabs, you don't need to secure those, but we're just going to secure the zip's position all the way down to the edge of our project using our straight pins. I'm no seamstress, so just, I'm just doing this in the same way that you would. And this is why it's good to have these ends of our project secured or where the end of the zipper is going to go because it can't move around too much. And we're just going to do this all the way around, all the way down our zip. See how that's bunched up? We don't like the look of that. So this is why you need a little bit more time to position, position this in place. Just do one side at a time securing that zip. Make sure you take the time to secure the bottom of your zip as well, because this is where we can see if it's bunching up like it has there. That is not looking good. So this is almost our, almost a type of pre-sewing. We're just placing it where it needs to be and just gently securing it against our project. See how much better that looks? So take a few moments to pin that zip in place and make sure that you pin across the bottom of your zip as well because that's if you've got a zip that's too long that's where you can sew across and secure that and I'll meet you back in a moment. So I have pinned all the way around my zip and the next thing for us to do is of course to have a look at it from the other side. Now this for me is not good enough so <laughs> it's not that I'm a perfectionist but this is supposed to be an invisible zip so that means I've a bit I've somehow managed to stretch my fabric as I've pinned it in place. So I do need to rearrange. The reason I'm saying that is if there's any stretch on my crochet fabric as I'm wearing a garment or something like that, it will mean that that zip will show. And that's a very, very gentle stretch. I'm not really pulling that, but it's not quite close enough. Obviously we don't want the zipper getting caught up in our fabric. But if I would just remove this stitch marker for a moment, if I was to undo this zip, that you can see that the, that's a pin in the way. <laughs> you can see that the fabric is a little bit too far away. It should be almost up to the edge of the zip. It's a bit too close. This bit down here looks really good, but yeah. So here how close I've got it. That's perfect, but this is a little bit too far away. So if, like me, you want to reposition, this is the time to do it before we sew. And this is why it's really good to pin and check. I've just taken a couple of pins out there. So I'm going to just quickly rearrange these and I'll be back with you in a moment. So it's only a very slight adjustment, but it does mean that the zip is less visible. It's essential if you are doing a invisible zip. Not so essential if you're doing a traditional zip, you would probably want to be able to see the teeth. So you're aiming to have your fabric sit almost flush with the edge of your zip so that it doesn't get caught because obviously that's coming down this way. So once you've pinned it in place, have a look, test your zip and then replace your stitch marker once you're happy with it. So remember this is the right side. If I hold those tabs, you can see that it's just over the teeth or right on top of the teeth there, which is the position we want for an invisible zip. So you can see, see just how flush that zip is with the edge of my crochet fabric. This side is not quite so much, so I'm gonna adjust this side. 
this is why I say it needs a little bit of time and a little bit of patience because it is worth taking a look, readjusting and redoing because we're going to sew this on and it should hopefully be permanent. We are going to, we can of course undo our sewing, but let's get it right first time. So if you need to readjust. I am finally happy with the positioning of my zipper. <laughs> I hope you are too. And yes, it is worth taking those extra few minutes just to make sure that it is exactly where you want it. There's no pulling on the fabric and it is nice and flush. Now, if you want to, you can take a few moments just to almost um, gently do some larger stitches in a contrasting colour. Now, I'm going to use this colour to actually sew this zip in to show you where I'm placing my stitches. But at this point, we are ready to get sewing. So once you're happy that your project looks good from the right side, this is a side that you're always going to look at. Turn back to the wrong side of the project where you've pinned your zipper and then we are going to thread our needle and get sewing. And I'm double, double stranding. I don't know how you do this, but I've got two ends, if you know what I mean. I'm tying a knot in the ed end of my thread just to help secure it. And I have gone for this subtle green colour here. So I'm going to start by coming up just through the zipper right at the top from the back because my knot will not be secured in my yarn and quite simply using a flat surface we are going to work or I'm going to work a back stitch because that's all I know and I am no seamstress and I'm aiming to get as close um, to this kind of about maybe not very far away from the actual teeth themselves so this is a little bit far out but I want to be about here And they are going to be quite small stitches. Once this one's secured, I can pull out this. Uh, I'm going to remove this pin here so I can show you what I'm actually doing. And I'm just literally doing a running stitch, really, more than a back stitch. And we're just trying to go through, the, not all the way through the... So there's my needle in place. If I show you the right side, we don't want to see... The thread coming all the way through but we want it securing the zip in place. We're not going all the way through the edge of our crochet project but we're just making nice stitches. Oh god I can't sew for toffee I'm not the best person to show you this bit. But essentially we're doing a bit of a running stitch making sure we're not moving our fabric too much where it isn't secured. It's easy to do this on a flat surface. So you want smallish stitches. This is why it takes me so long because I get caught up on everything here. And from the other side, we can't see that green fabric or the green thread, but it is there and it's just securing it to our project. Sewing is not my favourite thing at all. Everything seems to be getting in my way. So <laughs> I'm going to carry on working all the way down, I'm going to go across the edge and back up and I'll show you the results in a moment. As I said, I'm using a contrasting colour of thread so you can see and I'm aiming to stay down this line, keeping my stitches roughly where they're supposed to be when I'm sewing in. It does help that I know that I'm working just over the edge or just over the start of my edging stitches so I can help keep them in line that way too. Work all the way down sewing with a back stitch or a running stitch and I will see you in a moment. I just went to lift up my project and move it along. Secured my needle there because I have quite literally sewn this to my jeans. It's very firmly attached. So here's a little uh, how to on how to use a seam ripper. So a seam ripper has a sharp edge against here and this is the stopper. So you should have this against the fabric you don't want to cut. And I'm going to quite literally just insert, going to insert the seam ripper through the thread, hopefully picking up only the thread and not my project. And it just, 
in theory. And then it cuts it and releases it from your actual jeans. So I've just had to um, film myself unsewing this to my jeans because I made that fatal error of sewing on my lap and literally sewed it to my jeans. So I wanted to show you the other side and just to say I'm no seamstress, we're aware of that. Just going to trim off these excess threads because they could get caught up in our zip and we don't want that to happen. But essentially we are sewed in, sewn in, sewed, who knows what the right word is but it's in and it's hidden ish i think if i'd chosen the lighter color zip it would have been a bit less obvious but that is the aim ignore my bad sewing in as well now obviously there is an edge either side of there and then you have the question of if like me you haven't got quite close enough to the edge of your zip ideally it should be a little bit closer but as you can see i'm no seamstress but I'm quite pleased with that. Now, if you have got quite an excessive edge like I have here, you can whip stitch around the edge all the way down. But the most important thing to show you is the fact that you cannot, or barely, only there, see the thread that was used on the zip through the front of your project. If this was a bag, it would work like a normal, you wouldn't even see that, and it does become pretty much invisible. If you have seamed your project together with an alternative yarn, you can remove that now. And obviously, if you've used an alternative colour thread, I've used the contrast just to show you what it looks like. You can fold down and secure those down out of sight. If you are making a bag, you can continue to fold those in and seam your, see it's why they need to be sewn, <laughs> sew your, let's hide in there for a minute, they are not hiding, you might want to stitch those down most definitely and then you can seam down the side of your project and I would come up a few more stitches either side just to secure that. But that is it, you have sewn your zip on, it is practically invisible in the case of this invisible zip, if it was a normal zip the teeth would just be showing through those stitches but that is how to sew a zip onto your crate onto your project i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you found it useful if you have any questions of course ask away in the comments or let me know if you've successfully sewn in a zip into your, your crochet project without sewing it onto your lap or tell me if you have done that before that would make me feel a little bit better but we got it done and remember, we are not looking for perfection. We are looking for a nice flat attachment to our zip.